Welcome back. We're going to start a unit on relations, and we're going to look at various characteristics of relations. In this case, we're going to talk about domain and range. Relations are sets of pairs of input and output values. So they're a set, which means a group, and they're pairs, where in each pair is an input and an output. So for example, you could think of a vending machine. You put money in and you get items out. For example, you might put in 75 cents and get chips, or $1.50 and get juice. You put something in, the input, the money, and you get something out, in this case, juice. Now the values that you input into the relation, those values are called the domain. In the example of our vending machine, that would be the money that you're inputting. Typically, when we study relations in school, that would be the X of the relation. The output of the relation is called the range. These are all the values that come out of the relation. In the case of the vending machine, that would be the cookie, the chips, the water, the juice. It's what comes out of the vending machine. Again, when we talk about relations in a math class, this is typically Y. Now, there's special types of relations, and these special types of relations are called functions. Functions are special relationships where every input has one and only one output. So what do I mean by that? Let's look at our vending machine example. If you look at the pairs of input and output values at the bottom, you get 50 cents as an input, cookie as an output, 75 cents, chips, $1.50, juice. But if you put in a dollar, are you going to get pop or water? For that one input, a dollar, you have two outputs. You have either pop or water. Since we don't know what our output is going to be, this is not a function. You may have been taught in Algebra 1 that it's not a function if the x, the input value, is used more than once. Again, if the x is used more than once, it is not a function. So what is an example of a function? Well, if we were to change that dollar for water to $1.25, then this would be a function. Because every input, 50 cents, 75 cents, a dollar, dollar twenty-five, a dollar fifty, has just one output: a cookie, chips, pop, water, and juice. You're not going to put something into the vending machine and not know what you're going to get out. This would be an example of a function. Now, what we need to be able to do is to identify the domain and range of relations and determine if it's a function. So, for example, Miss Warden went fishing every day last week. The set below represents how many minutes she fished, that's the input, and how many fish she caught, that's the output. So for example, on the first day she fished for 120 minutes and caught two fish. So what is the domain of this? Well the domain is all the input values. So in this case the domain is the 120, 60, 90, 30, and 180. So we would write this as a set with curly braces and we would put in all the input values. We typically write them from the smallest number on the number line to the largest. The range then would be all of the outputs. In this case, how many fish she caught. So it'd be two, five, seven, two, and 11. Again, we would write this from smallest to largest, but keep in mind, even though we got the number two twice, we only write it once. I don't need to know how many times I got it in the range. I just need to know that I got that number. Now, is this relation a function? Well, in this case it is because every input is used only once. It has a unique output. Notice that the range used two twice. It's okay for the range to repeat a number, just not the domain. Let's look at another example. Mr. Beattie joined a buffalo wing eating contest. He needed to practice before the actual event, so the set below describes how many minutes he ate and how many wings he ate during that time. So what is the domain? Well, in this case, again, the domain is the input. It's how many minutes he spent eating the wings. Again, we write this from smallest to largest and in curly braces because it's a set of numbers. And we don't write the number 10 twice. We already know that we have the number 10. We don't need to know how many times we have. And what is the range? Well, again, in this case, it's the output. It's how many wings he ate. So we write that from smallest to largest. Is this a function? No, because in the domain, the number 10 was used twice. So if he eats for 10 minutes, we don't know if he's going to have 22 wings or if he's going to have 27 wings. So in this case, it is not a function. Here's an example of Mr. Chung trying to eat wings. Hit pause and see if you could find the domain range and determine if this is a function. Again, you don't have to write the number 11 twice in the domain or the number 3 in the range. And this is not a function because in the domain, the number 11 is used twice. Now, functions have special notation. 
you have f parentheses x equals y. This is read as f of x equals y. The f is just a function name. We typically use f for function, but it could be really any letter. What's in the parentheses is our input. Again, in math classes, a lot of time that's just x. And then the y is the output. Again, it doesn't have to be y, but in math classes, it's typically y. Let's look at an example that used function notation. So down below, Mr. Chung lost the wing contest and BD fired him. Chung began working at McDonald's and his paychecks were determined by the function P for paycheck, P of H, where H represents the hours worked, equals 8H plus 13. So we want to find P of 2, P of 5, P of 10, and P of 22. So what is the domain? Well, again, the domain is the input and the input values are what's in parentheses. So simply the domain is 2, 5, 10, and 22. So how do we find the range? Well, we take those input values, the 2, 5, 10, and 22, and we substitute them in for the h in our function. So then we take 8 times 2 plus 13, 8 times 5 plus 13, 8 times 10 plus 13, and 8 times 22 plus 13. And we end up getting 29, 53, 93, and 189. Those are the amounts of his paychecks, so the range is 29, 53, 93, and 189. Now relations can be represented in different ways. In the past example, it was as a function. Before that, it was a set of values. Here it is ordered pairs on the coordinate plane. The graph represents how many hours Ms. Erickson worked and how much she got paid. So for example, the first one was one hour worked and $10 earned. The second one is five hours worked and $90 earned. The third one is seven hours worked, $60 earned. The next is 10 hours worked and $140 earned. And then finally we have 15 hours worked and $120 earned. So the domain in this case is all the X values, one, five, seven, 10, and 15. And the range is all the amounts earned, 10, 60, 90, 120, and 140. Is this a function? Yes, it is a function because every x value, every input value is used only once. Let's look at even a simpler example. In this case, we can clearly see that the x values for these five dots are just negative 2, even though it's used twice, 0, and 2, even though that's used twice, and the y values are 1, 3, and 5, even though 1 and 5 are used twice. Now, there's another way to determine if a graph is a function, and it is called the vertical line test. Basically, it says if a vertical line can pass through more than one point on the graph, then it is not a function. So, for example, right here, as I draw a vertical line, it passes through two points. So, because it passes through two points, this one is not a function. Hit pause and determine the domain and range of this one and determine if it is a function. Again, the domain is just the x values, the range is the y values, and this is not a function because number two is used twice in the domain, or another way to look at it is a vertical line would pass through the graph twice. And that wraps up the beginning parts of domain and range with relations.